Hello and welcome to another submarine chat. This is going to be about Taiwan's first locally designed submarine, the Haikun or Narwhal class. I am H.I. Sutton. I'm an independent defense analyst. I focus mainly on the hardware side of things, so submarine stuff like that. Like my other talks, this is going to be unscripted and unedited. But I prepared some materials, so let's get on with it. Firstly, this submarine has been known until now as the Indigenous Defense Submarine or IDS program. It's essentially Taiwan's effort to modernize its submarine force by locally building submarines. It's also known as the Narwhal class or not, sorry, Narwhal class. It's not clear exactly what name it's going to have. There's some questions there. Anyway, we know what submarine we're talking about. It's quite important because Taiwan only has four operational submarines. And in fact, two of those are vintage World War II boats um, acquired from the US in the 1970s that are well beyond their prime. Um, it's debatable whether these are actually still active, although they're still listed. Desperate in need of replacement. The problem is that Taiwan has had difficulty acquiring submarines because of political pressure from China. There was a plan to build submarines in America about 20 years ago, but that nothing ever came of that. Now, very recently, Taiwan has looked to seriously produce submarines in, in the country, and the result is this Haikun class. It's quite significant. I think one of the biggest and most impressive aspects is how quickly they've been built. It took a long time politically to get to where we are building submarines but once they were laid down the first boat has taken less than two years from keel laying to launch actually at the moment um that i'm recording this i don't think it's actually in the water yet it's not been floated but there was a launch ceremony a couple of days ago submarines interesting we can start to figure out quite a lot about it from the imagery and also knowledge of taiwanese and world submarines for example, this image tells us that there is a double hull construction for part of the submarine. You can see that there, the gap between the outer and the inner hulls. The inner hull has been pixelated by the Taiwanese government, of course, to prevent you seeing what's in there, but it'll be the engine room, the electric motor is my guess. And on the outside, you have a light outer hull. The style of outer hull, the way the um, it's connected to the inner hull, is very reminiscent of US Navy double hull submarines from the 1960s. The US Navy now only built single hull submarines, but uh, this is still, I'd say, an American style. And that's not really surprising because we know something of the lineage of this submarine. Another hint, which also goes to that, is this section here. You can see those two vertical lines. They are where the light outer hull is connected to the inner hull, which becomes single hull in the middle. If you don't know what I'm talking about, single double hull, I did a video on it. It's best to go there. It's a lot quite hard to explain. But it does mean we can start to understand what the inside of the submarine is like. A lot of people are commenting that it looks quite rough on the outside. These images show the how that it's not that smooth and so on. What they're actually showing, though, is that outer hull and the sail, which is like the outer hull, not part of the pressure hull. It doesn't have to be pressure resistant. It's sheet steel and quite lightweight. That's fine. I think there isn't a big deal here at all. It's not that surprising or that concerning. The submarine doesn't have anechoic tiles on the outside. That's the rubber tiles that absorb um, noise, but it all the same um this is pretty typical of of submarine construction to be honest here's some video stills of it under construction combined with some drawings that are shown in some of the videos produced by the government or for the government there's some strong hints to the internal layout this actually confirms what i thought i already knew the submarine is essentially a reverse engineered um, Dutch uh, Svardis class submarine. I'm saying that terribly, but we'll go with that. So 
a bit about the design lineage. The history of this submarine really goes back to a US Navy submarine class in the 1960s, the Barbell class. At the time, the Barbell class was among the most modern, probably the most modern um, non-nuclear submarines in the world. But the US Navy was switching to entirely nuclear powered submarines. So Narwhal class was something of a uh, brief and very and not building any real numbers sort of class. However, its design was exported to both the Netherlands and Japan and formed the basis of their respective uh, submarine building programs going forward. So modern Japanese submarines have something in common with this uh, uh, submarine in Taiwan, which is being based on the Dutch part of that branch of that family. So there on the left, we have the Spardis class on the, the right, a Japanese submarine. The Svardis was sold to Taiwan as the High Lung class. Two of those are in service. They are by far the most capable submarines in Taiwanese service as of today. What's pretty clear is that the new submarine is essentially a reverse engineered Svardis class with some modernizations. In fact, you can say that it's a combination of the Svardis class and the same sort of modifications that went into the Warrus class in the Netherlands. The Warrus class was a follow on to as far this. This is similar again. One of the most distinct of these modernizations is the inclusion of X form rudders at the back. So instead of the cruciform traditional uh, rudder arrangement. I actually think that this is a bit high risk. The rest of the submarine seems quite conservative and careful which is very sensible for the first uh, locally designed and built submarine but this particular feature adding x form rudders is a little bit ambitious and is probably where the greatest design risk is also note that the propeller or screw has been covered up that's completely normal it's almost certainly a seven blade uh, screw back a screw back uh, a skew pack propeller apologies let's look at the um layout of the submarine so in the center there we have the double hull sorry apologies the single hull construction with two decks that's three levels in total the bottom part will be full of batteries we're pretty sure of that above that there will be accommodation and the control room and so on the forward hull is primarily the torpedo room and based on the high lung class that's the um the dutch as far as class uh but in taiwan it should have six torpedo tubes and 28 weapons which is quite a lot possibly it's had reduced torpedo tubes and or weapons but you know based on the specs that's quite a quite a bit additionally the the weapons are uh, quite significant and more modern in particular, the Mark 48 Mod 6 torpedo has been supplied by the US. This is a very modern advanced torpedo, not the most modern, but uh, but definitely very capable. And it also has a sub-harpoon anti-ship missile. This is much less of a, uh, a big deal, really. It's a useful weapon, but it's, it's getting a little bit dated. The combat system is US supplied, as are so many of the sensors and the masts and so on. So there's a lot of sophisticated kit being fitted into the submarine. Behind that main section where the accommodation is will be the propulsion. There'll be diesel generators, electric motor, and so on. The sonar, as you'd expect, but significantly a large flank array. Let's quickly compare it to Chinese submarine. The Yuan class is the most numerous and capable of the Chinese non-nuclear submarines. Very quick comparison between two. The intention here is not to say one is better than the other. It's to just generally see how the, the Haikun class compares in general sense, where it fits in overall. So firstly, they're both diesel electric. Um, they both likely have raft mountains. I'm pretty confident of that. So their engine spaces are going to be um, 
quite quiet. Where they differ, though, the Yuan class has AIP, air independent power. That means that it can travel much further or for longer, at least, between re um, recharge, needing to recharge its batteries. So it is more stealthy in the sense that it has a much longer um, indiscretion rate. Basically, it can travel around without depleting its batteries using an alternative power source, in its case, Sterling Motors. That's a significant advantage, and you could you could reasonably say that the Yuan class is inherently stealthier because of it. Another difference, as far as we can tell, the Haikun class um, doesn't have an anechoic coating. I can be confident of that right now. Whether or not they might fit one later, I, d I don't know. But the Yuan class definitely does. Also, the latest version of the Yuan class, and you might notice that the illustrations just changed a bit, has faceted out uh, exterior surfaces, particularly the, the upper casing and the sail. That is intended to reduce the sonar uh, signature, if you like, against active sonar. It's not a huge deal. It's an iterative improvement. And again, it would suggest that the Yuan class is likely stealthier in some cases when it's being uh, detected by active sonar. In terms of weapons, we've covered the the US weapons on the Taiwanese boat. The Chinese boat has similar torpedoes, but of Chinese origin. Significantly, it has a electric power torpedo as well as a thermal powered one, a little bit more variety. The Mark 48, by comparison, is only thermal powered. Anti-ship missiles, a bit bigger difference. The the sub harpoon, as I mentioned, is a little bit dated. The YJ-18 that the Chinese boats carry is a generation more modern. It's actually based on the Russian SSN-27 Sizzler. It's a supersonic anti-ship missile. Um, these are regarded very seriously by NATO, certainly the Russian version. The Chinese version is likely as good. Just to comment on sonar, the sonar on the Haikun class is likely to be very sophisticated and very good for what it is. Um, the Yuan class, we don't know how good the sonar is. I would you know, caution against assuming that it's that much worse. Um, however, one significant difference is that Yuan class has a towed array. This is only fitted to the latest models of Yuan class but it is a significant advantage for those boats. Okay, so Taiwan's planning six, I think eight of these submarines. Maybe the future ones will be at some point an improved variation. Um, it's really impressive how quickly they've built them. And I think as a first submarine, this is going straight in at a pretty average, but respectable uh, diesel electric submarine uh, design. Other projects to watch out for in Taiwan space, the Seawolf 400 autonomous underwater vehicle. It's, I wouldn't say very extra large, it's sort of a large uh, underwater robot. Um, it's still in its early stages. Similarly, there's the Sea Shark 400 USV. This is not a submarine, but a small uncrewed service vessel, like an automated jet ski, essentially. It's not as large as the ones used by Ukraine, see, or rather it's even smaller than the ones used by Ukraine, it probably cannot carry a explosive charge in its current form, but could easily be modified to, made a bit larger to carry the explosives. And then lastly, there's the uh, midget submarine project. Not much is known about this. It's going to be about 30 meters long, as you can see. But it's uh, under construction, and exactly what the, the goals and purpose are is a little bit elusive. Okay, thank you very much. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe. As I say, it was unscripted and unedited. That's pretty obvious. But uh, thank you very much.